A lot of videos out there on how to remove a bumper, but I've not seen one on how to remove an E92 M3 fender. Here we are again in Rob's garage working on dismantling the E92 M3 so we can start the rebuild process after my on track incident at Chuck Walla Valley Raceway. Last, uh, last time I showed you how to remove the diff in the rear axles. Today we're going to remove the front bumper and this broken fender. I've never removed the fenders on this before, it'll be interesting, but I'll show you how to take the bumper off. It's pretty simple. Fortunately, nothing got damaged in the engine bay in that accident and I'm so relieved because I spent like 30 hours getting ready for that race here in the engine bay and I made a lot of content in the process. I'll be posting it soon, how to change spark plugs, coil packs, oil filter housing gasket, upgrade the oil diverter valve, the new water pump, thermostat, thermostat sensor, a bunch of other stuff. So watch for those videos coming up soon. You got four Torx bolts, one, two, three, four. You got one or two screws hidden behind up in here behind each inner wheel well we'll remove those and then there's three bolts here one two three somewhere hidden here you've probably got screws or something else i've got to run some aftermarket under tray so you might have something else but it's pretty simple to remove the bumper let's get to it first step was to get the car up on jack stands now we're going to take the wheels off Technically, you don't have to have it on jack stands. You don't have to take the wheels off. I have actually removed the bumper with the car on the ground, twisting the wheels back and forth to access the, uh, the nuts behind here. But it's a little easier to take the wheels off completely and remove the inner fender. said you don't need to take the wheel off you can actually just get an eight millimeter socket in there and remove those nuts from the outside as I'm pointing to them here and then you peel it back a bit and it'll access the one or two nuts that hold the bumper together I can't remember if it's one or two but it's a little easier admittedly if you just take off the wheel completely and then remove all these nuts that I'm pointing to um, pull that front inner fender out and it's give you a lot more clearance to access the bumper screws. I'm actually going to remove the rear part of the front inner fenders as well, over on this side, because we're getting rid of these all together. Because so of the damage that was sustained here, there we go, on the fender. We're gonna remove these all together to get rid of the OEMs. I've got some carbon fiber fenders coming that are vented, hence we'll no longer need the inner fenders. No sense in having them, so we'll take them out. We are on the driver's side. Turns out there's two 10 millimeter nuts on this side here, the very front. And there's another 10 millimeter nut. Then we have several eight millimeters. One, two, three, four, five or so I'm counting. That should be all you need, the front half of the inner fender. This is on the driver's side. It's pretty much the same on the passenger, I think. There's only one nut difference on the passenger side. Now with all the nuts off, we can remove this fender. Just kind of pry it from the inside. Mine was shaved on the bottom, so you might have a little more tugging and maybe another nut or two underneath, but I had mine shaved for the track. The inner fender removed, I can show you where the two screws are that hold the fender to the bumper. One right here. Other 
right next to it. It's just this bracket here. All right, repeat that on the passenger side. Last thing we gotta do is take our E30 Torx bit here, remove these four bolts up on top, hold the bumper to the, I don't know what this is called, <laughs> where the radiator goes, that thing. Yeah, everybody likes to use power tools. I'm so old school. Still just like the feel of a handheld ratchet sometimes. Probably why I'm a little slower, but. All right, after this one, we should have all fasteners removed. And we will be ready to just lift the bumper off because I removed the three screws on the bottom. I didn't show you that part though, did I? Yeah, I removed my three screws on the bottom. Yours are gonna probably be different. All you gotta do is pull. Gently. Bumpers off. For my next magic trick, we're gonna try and remove this driver's side fender. I think there's about eight 10 millimeter nuts. I've never done this before. I've removed the bumper plenty of times, but never a fender. So let's learn this together. I think I got one, two, three, four bolts up top. You're gonna to have to remove your rocker panel, which thankfully mine's already been knocked off on the track. So we got, let's see, five and six here. <laughs> I've got an access hole here. For number seven, and I think number eight is tucked up in there. So ideally you gotta remove the back part of your front inner fender like I have done here. Um, if you just loosen it, it'll come down. Start here in the front. Inside the fender, take a long extension, a 10 millimeter. Later, and then the other one down here. <laughs> said earlier, these two access by removing your rocket. was conveniently knocked off. And I think we found two more bolts. One right up here. And then the other actually in the door jam area. Uh, right in there. Well, that one was harder to get out than I would have liked. I couldn't show it on camera. I'm trying to Use an open end wrench in there. Still confusing. We have yet one more. It's an eight millimeter nut or bolt stuck up in here. So I hope this is the last one. Let's see if this will come off now. Now there is a wire connector right there for the turn signal we're gonna have to take off. There's something else to hold. Something else still holding it.
All right, guys, I got to figure it out. Finally got the fender removed. Sorry, I didn't get on camera, but it was this bracket right here. There's an eight millimeter bolt and then this, uh, it's another E30 Torx bolt right here. And they mount up in here. Okay, so one here and the other through here. Let's focus on that. And so you have to remove, you got to remove this, this bracket now. Here's the issue, is once you remove it, then you've really got to finagle the headlight here. You gotta, you gotta pull it out of the way so you can pull the fender out. So it takes a little bit of patience, but you don't have to remove the headlight altogether. You just have to be able to remove that bracket, pull this out of the way, and then pull the fender out, and there you go. Well, that's gonna do it tonight from Rob's Garage. Thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and follow along as we rebuild this M3, get it back on the track. I appreciate the support. It gives me motivation to keep this thing going. I will see you on down the road.